Welcome, friends. So, you got the finalizer. That's awesome. But, I want to talk today about how you use it. Uh, it is a fantastic attacking ship. Terrible defensive ship, because there's a lot of nuance that the, the AI just cannot get around uh, to using the finalizer. It's a very technical fleet. And so you have to be, you know, smart with it, unlike a lot of other fleets. And so it can be your greatest asset or your greatest detriment just because you don't understand the kit. Uh, and so the entire fleet is basically a fleet of TIE Silencer, Kylo Ren and Mask's ship. <clears throat> all, the, all the team is basically to support him. So we're going we're gonna to take you in and kind of show you how you're supposed to use this fleet. So don't really need the tie dagger most of you probably don't have the tie dagger i literally can count on one hand the amount of times i've actually pulled it in as a reinforcement so we're going to ignore it uh so this is your typical fleet if you're worried you can always bring in karth um but this is your fleet right here so make sure you're working on that tie echelon so you go in and basically, with Finalizer, how it works is uh, when the match starts, it activates all of your reinforcement abilities to your ships. So unlike other ships where you have to call in a reinforcement to get their reinforcement ability, you instantly get it. So for instance, Kylo Ren Unmasked immediately gets Afterburners. <clears throat> and so basically, you know, great stuff for him. Get, reduces his cooldowns and he gains uh, advantage off of people getting hit um, all of these buttons are not very important <laughs> um, so unlike most capital ships the finalizer comes with its ultimate already prepared on the first uh, round but the ultimate is much less powered than other ships obviously but it can be what gives you that little uh, little boost uh, and so, for instance, you look at this, and it's uh, you make that enemy hunted. Uh, all this other stuff is important, but the biggest part is you make them hunted. So, hunted enemies deal 75% less damage without out of attack turns, out of turn attacks. Sorry, and can't gain bonus turn meter. And so, you use this either on whoever's going to be assisting most, or you use it on whoever's going to be uh, you know gaining turn meter on the team. So, like for instance, Anakin on negotiator, you throw it on that. Uh, Hound's Tooth, you'll throw it on that so that way it doesn't gain turn meter off of you hitting its allies. Uh, so Geonosian Soldier uh, basically has a chance to assist off of every attack and will be called to assist by uh, the Spy as well. And so we'll start off by throwing our Hunted. You always want to throw Hunted on your first turn on <clears throat> that person that you've chosen as your biggest problem for that kind of thing. Um... Now, with uh, Kylo Ren on Mask, you always want to make sure that if you're ever using his missiles, you have advantage. I don't currently have advantage, so I'm looking at using his basic. Because uh, it deals 100% um, more damage if he has advantage. Uh, and then if it kills an enemy, he gains foresight and turn meter. But the important part is doubling damage if he has advantage. And so we're not going to waste it right here. So instead, we're going to use his basic. And his basic, if they have more than 50% turn meter, he stuns them, or attempts to. And if they have less, then he gains advantage. So they have full turn meter. That means we're going to try and stun. We got the stun. Now here's the one that's kind of complicated, because he has a lot of abilities. Uh, his basic just basically gives him protection up. Um, this one allows him to pass a turn over to a target person and reduce their cooldowns. But they lose 20% protection. That's not max, so you can regen that protection, but they lose 20% protection. And so that's to basically give advantage and a turn over to Kylo Ren Unmasked as often as you can. So you can use that and keep pushing turn meter there. Or this one has a large amount of text to just say, don't ever use it on anyone else. You click it, and then you click on the uh, command shuttle, and that'll remove all of its turn meter and push turn meter into all of its allies. Alternatively, the other thing, that, the reason that you can choose is because you can choose, like, for instance, him, and it remove all of his turn meter and give it to everyone, uh, but it's always best to pull, put it on Command Shuttle. It, there's never really a reason to take it from other people. 
Then his last ability is uh, Dispel All Buffs, which is always great. And then it has a chance of inflicting healing immunity uh, and then ability block. And the ability block can't be evaded or resisted. So you have a chance for the healing immunity, but then the uh, ability block is like absolutely it, it has to happen. Um, and so his his entire shtick is basically just to keep feeding turns to the other people uh, and then making sure that you can get around tanks. Uh, and so, like, right here, I'm not really worried. If I was worried and I wanted to take out Sunfag fast, I could just drop a turn straight to him and start pushing. Uh, but I'm just going to push turn meter the whole team, give everyone advantage. Uh, he's low on, uh, on turn meter, which means if he does a basic, he's going to get advantage again. So his, this guy's basic is basically, you know, deal target lock if they're hunted. And then if, if they already had target lock, call all other first order allies to assist uh, if they had advantage. And then they gain advantage again afterwards. So you don't lose advantage from using it. But then his other ability puts himself as a taunter, puts his allies under stealth, uh, and then calls all first order allies uh, to assist. And so it's a mass swarm, which is great. Uh, so I want to keep his taunt up. I'm just going to throw that. He's going to still have advantage. He can take a huge beating, and also part of the kit that interacts with finalizers. Whenever you're critical hitting, he'll be healing, and so you'll just constantly heal your echelon as you go. Um, so we're just gonna continue to pump turn meter. I don't see why why we should change up our uh, our strategy, right? Okay, now he has advantage. We'll hit the missile, and you can see just how much damage that did in just one hit. It's crazy. And so now we, uh, we're still stuck behind him, so we're just going to hit basic. And so at this point, we don't have that off of cooldown because they haven't hit us enough. Because as, he, as his allies get hit, command shuttle gains turn meter and reduces cooldowns. So what we're going to do is we'll pass the turn back over to Kylo Ren. That reduces his cooldowns, gives us the missile again. And then I am more worried about the spy because he has the mass assists. So we'll go for him. And he's gone. Just magic. Poof. The reason I said these aren't very important is because 99% of the time you're not going to be using almost any of them. Um, deal physical damage to all enemies. It deals increased damage when, for each hunted enemy. Like, yeah, okay. Deal physical damage to target enemy. Inflict offense down. Target lock. If they're resistance or hunted, these effects can't be resisted. Like, sure, that's, that's good. But honestly, because we talked about how the silencer is the heart of this fleet... Uh, and everything else is meant to work around that you literally use hunted and then you use the basic because the basic uh target ally uh, gains critical damage up for two turns and if they are first order they're called to assist so basically you use that to be like oh yeah you know he's sitting there like i could bring in someone else obviously but he's sitting there so i could do this and call him into assist he has more than 50 percent turn meter and so he will then get stunned or, you know, we'll do crazy damage because the silencer just does insane damage. And so the basic is really all you're going to be using uh, besides the hunted mechanic. Uh, these other two you kind of ignore 99% of the time. Uh, <clears throat> you got two reinforcements here. Um, you kind of use them for different things. So this one, the first order of special forces, is typically what you bring in first. It gives your allies increased potency, reduces the tenacity of the enemy team, which allows you to get that stun more often off of TIE Silencer, uh, get the ability block off of the Special Forces itself um, procced, and so it has a lot of uses like that. But then if you're looking for just straight damage, you'll go for this one. So if you're just like looking for some solid damage, so it inflicts target lock on the enemy for two turns, and then all allies gain 15% turn meter, which is always great. Uh, and so we'll show you off this one real quick. And so it'll put target lock on the enemy. And then he puts target lock on his basic. And then he has a chance to attack again. And then his secondary is just deal tons of damage, basically. Uh, but then his cooldown is refreshed if they have target lock. And so we can click that and deals tons of damage. And then at this point, this is going to kill him off, obviously. But yeah, well, you know, you're going to gain advantage on the ship because he's less than 50% turn meter. And so we'll just hit basic. Oh, missed it. But we still have advantage, so we're good. 
Uh, so, you know, we'll keep pushing turn meter. And now literally, like, everyone's gonna take a turn first before, uh, that Geonosian does. Uh, so he no longer has target lock, so you can't use this without losing the cooldown, so there's basic. Now you have target lock, and now, because target lock, call other first order allies with advantage to assist. Voila. <clears throat> And so that's the basics of the fleet. Um, another little thing is because of the whole healing off of getting critical hits, uh, the second ship, the Special Forces type uh, ship, is going to help you a ton because it has an AoE. And that AoE can get, you know, five crits, which will um, heal up your fleet a ton. Will heal up your uh, echelon a ton, specifically, is what you're worried about. Okay, so... Hopefully that kind of explains how each ship works overall. Um, there, there's a little bit more to it if you want to go read the kits, but that's basically all we, we really need to know. Um, next up is the finalizer counter. So, obviously I was testing at profundity. So we got our ships. And honestly, we never need the tie dagger. I just always throw it in here. Um, I like having uh, special forces in the first slot. It's the way that you can tell which one's which is it's darker. Um, but I like having it in the first slot just because it's the first reinforcement you typically bring in. And especially against this fleet, it's always the first one that you take in. So there is a lot of nuance to this battle, um, and that's why I wanted to bring it up, because most other fleets, as long as you know how to use your finalizer, you can kind of just go at it. But this one has a ton of nuance, and so I wanted to go over it real quick. <clears throat> okay, so... That's a problem. Lol. I brought in the wrong uh, capital ship. I'm like, I am not having the right turn order. It's because I brought in the wrong capital ship. I hate how the capital ship's in the corner. It's always something that I forget to do. So, because of the fact that you have all first order, your finalizer will take first turn. Music gains increased speed based off of how many first order allies you have at the start. So what you immediately want to do is you're going to put Hunted on Bosk because every time you hurt his allies, he gains turn meter. And so we need to shut off that turn meter entirely. And so we'll shut off that turn meter on Bosk. So now he won't gain. At this point, we don't have uh, advantage. We don't want to waste anything. We're just going to, you know, work a little bit on Mando. Now, we have uh, a whole bunch of stuff before uh, Houndstooth takes a turn. <laughs> they have a chance at calling him to assist. And so if we were to ability block him now, if he somehow manages to get a breach on, on one of us, he dispels his debuffs, which could be detrimental. So you want to wait a, at least one turn before you hit uh, ability block on him. And so, I'm, instead, I'm just going to push turn meter. And we'll get just a little bit of fun out there. Okay. Um, and the problem is, now, Executor's going to go next. And so, instead of going and being like, oh, yeah, we're just going to have, uh, you know, the ability block right now. If execu Executor's going next, it automatically is... Uh, going to mass swarm which means as it mass swarms on our ally it's going to push turn meter into uh, our command shuttle and so we'll get another turn before uh, we have houndstooth come in and so instead I'm just gonna push turn meter again and we will uh, we'll, we'll try and get Cad Bane out while we have a moment Okay, so now we have another turn. He's almost dead, but 
that doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to hit that ability block on Bosk, and that'll allow him to not taunt. So there, he's not taunting now. And so now we have free reign to just mess with his entire team. It doesn't matter what's happening, we're just going to keep messing with his entire team. So I'm actually going to pass turn meter because I want a big boom. Okay, so here's where uh, we have another kind of nuance thing. Uh, next up, we need to get Bosk either under stun or ability blocked. Uh, so we're going to bring in our first order special forces type. Bring that in. They now have minus, uh, what is it, minus 20% tenacity and we have an increased 40% uh, potency. And so we're going to go in on him. We landed the ability block. So now he's out of the picture. We don't have to worry about him. Although the executor may cleanse him off. So we do need to pay attention. See, we, we may have to stun him again. We're good. Okay, there's, there's, this basically means there's a ton of buffs that will hurt you. <laughs> and so instead of trying to attack him just yet, we're going to instead use our ability block on him. Uh, and then at this point, we can either go after Mando, uh, but honestly, I get scared of Boba Fett because of his uh, ability to um, throw out a seismic charge. And so we're going to go all in on him, finish him off. Uh, if we need to heal up here, we can hit this, and that'll heal up our echelon if we get any crits. We didn't get any crits, unfortunately, that time. Usually you get a couple, though. Uh, so at this point, we do need him under stun or ability block. And so we're just going to push turn meter and call it good. Um, let's try and get the kill real quick. Wow, uh, we had offense down. I didn't notice it. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I will bring out my last reinforcement. Let's throw it on a Hound's Tooth so we can get some target lock. Get some solid damage in. So obviously, you know, I'm, uh, I'm definitely, you know, being rather slow about this because, you know, we're, we're learning. Um, and so I only have 30 seconds left. Usually you can do this much quicker. But, you know, at this point, they're gonna bring in IG-2000. Not really a problem. Um, all that means is basically, um, uh, we just have to, you know, hit it with one of these, and it's gone. That's it. And there you go, there's your finalizer counter. Uh, you know, this turn order thing on the side is really, really important for that beginning play, because depending on if it's a 4-star, 5-star, 6-star, or 7-star finalizer, you have to play it a little differently, because you have to pay attention to how many people have turns, uh, before you hit your ability block. Um, but you basically want to hit your ability block um, on the last turn before Hound's Tooth takes a turn. Um, and to do that, you always have to be paying attention to who's taking turns in a row. Because a lot of people can do things like they won't level up their Razor Crest, they won't level up their Cad Bane, that kind of thing. And so you have to be pay paying attention to that turn order quite a bit. But, you know, give it a couple practice runs and you can probably do this no problem. So you, uh, take advantage of your Fleet Arena Shard. Be able to, you know, take a look at that uh, as you're going. Uh, you may have seen it earlier in the video. Uh, I don't have one right here because we did win. Um, because I did jump the gun a bit because we had six seconds left and I made a choice. But there is a way to counter Finalizer and you saw the other guy that was in my shard uh, using it. Which is the triple attacker lineup. Uh, you can still do the triple attacker lineup, but it's very, very iffy. Uh, the key is basically just killing IG-2000 before Houndstooth shows up. And then after that, you just full in on Houndstooth until you get through it. It's super messy, super rough, but it's possible. Uh, but it's like a 40-50% win rate in, in my experience. So uh, if you see that, be prepared. It can be beaten. But that is your executor that you'll see in almost every part of the game is they just use the basic lineup and it's super easy to take out with finalizer um it can get messy go check out my last stream if you want to see one that gets messy um but you can still pull it off and it's an easy cleanup after finalizer regardless um but hopefully that helps you guys kind of understand how to use your new fleet um i know there's a lot of nuance to it and a lot of it will just come with practice 
Uh, but overall, it's a great fleet. Don't ever put it on defense, though. It's AI is just not smart. Uh, but on offense, it's a powerhouse. It's great. Um, another small warning, uh, Malevolence is its greatest weakness. If you can find another fleet that can uh, counter Malevolence, that's great. Uh, but Malevolence is its biggest weakness of all the fleets. It can take out basically any fleet with some good RNG, um, except for, you know, Profanity and Leviathan. But Malevolence specifically, because it doesn't really have any buff dispels, or sorry, cleanses at all. So it has buff dispels, but its cleanses are just gone. There's nothing there. Um, and so, um, basically, the only way that you're going to succeed on a finalizer is if you, um, if you do finalizer versus Malevolence. Let me see if I can find it in my massive ships. There we go. This one right here. So, you may have to waste a Plo Koon. I don't know if you have a Galactic Republic fleet, but this is kind of how you stop yourself from getting absolutely brutalized by Malevolence and giving yourself, like, a 70% win rate is by giving Plo Koon's Jedi Starfighter to the team because you call him into assist and you dispel all debuffs from all allies. Doesn't matter that they're first order, it's just all allies get these things. And so, basically, you're just using it to get rid of all of the... Uh, Oh, the buzz droids. That's what they're called. I haven't faced the malevolence in a while. Um, or cared about the malevolence in a while. But, yeah. So, the finalizer's rough against malevolence. If you're going to take it against it, make sure you have a Plo Koon with at least five stars with that upgraded reinforcement ability. Um, but, yeah. There you guys go. Uh, go out there and go destroy your fleet shard. See if you can't get in the top 50, uh, you know. That constant stream of crystals is so incredibly important and so helpful. It may seem like just a little bit to have, you know, 50 crystals a day, but that is a crazy amount to increase. You know, going from, you know, 50 crystals to 350. Um, so, you know, a week is 350 crystals that you wouldn't have had. And that's every week for the whole year you can have 350 crystals a week. Like, that is bonkers. It's insane. So, you know, climb your fleet shard. See what you can't do with the uh, f with the finalizer. It'll give you some uh, opportunities to, uh, you know, practice with it as well. Kind of get those counters down. Figure out what a four star, five star, and six star, seven star executor are gonna do. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any uh, anything to add about the kit, throw it in the comments section. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.